Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Atomize. I'm Adam Serwer with Mother Jones, and I'm here with EJ Graff of The American Prospect. Uh, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Adam? I'm good. I'm good. So, uh, you know, there's obviously a, there's a very big um, decision coming up this Friday, uh, or decision or non-decision coming this Friday from the Supreme Court, uh, where I think they, they sort of kicked the ball down the road, I think, a little longer uh, than people expected, but we'll, where we're going to find out whether or not they're going to take any of these uh, same-sex marriage cases uh, that, that that are pending. And I'm wondering, you know, that obviously that there are two different types of cases. I guess you, you could sort of them into do, two different ca- categories. You have the challenges to the uh, Defense of Marriage Act, and then you have the sort of Prop 8, uh, you know, the referendum cases. Yep, and there's just one just, Prop 8 case. Right, there's just right. the one Prop 8 case. Yep. Um, and, and, and I am wondering, uh, you know, EJ, I'm wondering which case uh, or cases you would like to see the Supreme Court take. Well, I, I can tell you immediately that what we're waiting with huge anxiety about is whether or not they're going to take the Prop 8 case. We, uh, the, generally, the LGBT side is really, really hoping they will decide not to review that, to let the Ninth Circuit decision stand, which would mean that uh, pretty much immediately same-sex couples in California would be able to marry. And Mm -hmm. that would double the number of people in the country who are living in marriage equality states overnight. Because California is huge. But if they do decide to review it, then that remains stayed. And then we have to wait anxiously to see what they're going to say about that case. Now, is there sort of anxiety about, you know, I, I mean, I know it seems like the past 10 years or so, we've seen like a, a sort of incredible march forward on gay rights stuff. Um, Ten, five. It, yes, it, astounding. Uh, and, and, you know, is there just, is there, is the concern that, you know, the Supreme Court may not have gone that far yet? Uh, well, well, I guess there's only one. It, there's, there's only one or two people on the Supreme Court that actually matter in terms of like it, whether you know. It, it, I guess the question is sort of: Is Anthony Kennedy? Uh, you know, has Anthony Kennedy evolved as the rest of the? Well, the, you know what? Let, let's talk about the Doma cases first, so, and yeah. then I'll explain why we don't want them to take the Prop 8 case. Sure. Um, I, not that I'm personally speaking for every single LGBT person in the country, but uh, this is the general thinking among the advocates. Uh, so the DOMA cases are pure challenges to Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, passed in 1996, signed by Clinton, um, that says that for federal purposes, marriage is between a man and woman. And so that means that even though uh, I am lawfully married in the state of Massachusetts, in the United States, I am unmarried. So I file two sets of taxes. If, um, God forbid, I should drop dead tomorrow, my wife has no claim on my Social Security benefits. If we were of different nationalities, she wouldn't be able to use my her marriage as a, um, you know, in an immigration, in an attempt to become a citizen, mm-hmm. and a variety of other things like that. Uh, there's... And that's a very that's a very targeted set of cases. They all all argue the same things. I think there are five on appeal right now, um, and they all argue the same thing, which is just that that section three is unconstitutional. That uh, it's the state's job to um, decide whether or not you're married, to set the terms of marriage, and for the federal government to pick and choose among a set of uh, lawfully made marriages from a given state is um, denying the equal protection of the laws to those citizens. Mm -hmm. It does not say there is a right to marry that is fundamental to the Constitution. We do not want that that idea to be heard by the United States Supreme Court. Now, why is that? Why is that? Um, Well, let me me finish up with Doma. I I promise to get back. Yeah, my my theory here is that I'm guessing that the second, the the the, the first of the DOMA cases are more, We're gonna win. perhaps more friendly to conservative philosophy, whereas the sort of reading of a same sex marriage right into the Fourteenth Amendment is perhaps maybe a bridge too far uh, in a way that the DOMA challenges aren't. Is that is that the case? 
that that's a very um, that's an outstanding technical analysis. I, w- I would say it's a lot more visceral. We're going to win the Doma Section Three because mm-hmm. Kennedy wrote uh, uh, both Romer and Lawrence in sweeping terms. It's essentially it's essentially um, uh, for, libertarian for reasoning. People who might not know what what those cases are. Could you say what those are? Yes, uh, Romer was a groundbreaking case, and I'm going to blank on what year it is right now. Um, was it in the 90s? It must have been in the 90s. Yes, it was in the 90s, uh, in which uh, the s- various cities in the state of Colorado had passed uh, non-discrimination laws uh, that covered sexual orientation. I don't think they covered gender identity, but sexual orientation. And the state of Colorado had a ballot initiative, and the citizens of Colorado voted, in a majority of them voted to say, you cannot protect LGBT people under anti-discrimination laws. They, you know, and mm-hmm. that was challenged. That was uh, how the anti-gay um, ballot initiatives were all going at the time. There were a bunch mm-hmm. of them. Um, that was challenged, and the Supreme Court ruled, and Kennedy wrote the ruling saying a, straight, a, a, a state cannot so make a citizen a stranger to its laws. In other words, we had to be able to use um, uh, the political process to pass things for us. You couldn't call us unconstitutional just on its face. So, right. um, so that got struck down. That was huge. That was the, our first ever Supreme Court victory. Mm-hmm. Um, the next victory was Lawrence v. Texas, in which the Supreme Court said uh, overruled its own previous decision from 1987, um, Bowers v. Hardwick, and said that uh, it was unconstitutional for any state to outlaw uh, same-sex sexual intimacy or uh, other things covered under the sodomy law. Mm-hmm. Um, so that meant that being gay no longer meant you were a, almost automatically considered a felon, and I think there were right. nine, ten states left. That was also huge, because that presumption of fel- felony, presumption of felonious status, was used to deny people custody of their children and uh, to ban them from certain jobs. It, it, was, it was really quite horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, so those it's just a few years ago. I mean, it's it's correct. In political terms. It's not a very long time. Very very recent. But in in judicial terms, it was a very quick overturning of the 1987 right. decision. So um, it was one of the great days of my life. Um, the so this one, the Doma cases. No one thinks the Supreme Court is ready viscerally to say we have a right to marry. In part. Uh, a fundamental constitutional right to marry, in part because the country's not there yet, right? So they they do, you know, put their finger in the wind. They do check and see. They don't want to be too far ahead of the country. Um, and right now we have nine states in the District of Columbia that, <clears throat> excuse me, that are marrying same-sex couples. That's even if our percentages are about 52% approval, 54% approval nationally, that's not enough of a margin to take that question away from the states. The states traditionally have had the right to say who marries, who doesn't, under what conditions and what terms. What they are, what we think, we, not me personally again, but the movement, um, what people think they are ready to do um, is say uh, at least five to four and possibly six to three that it's not, the federal government does not have the power to take that definition away from the states. So, okay, so why 6-3? I'm, I'm curious to hear uh-huh, your thoughts. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing you're talking about John Roberts, because the, 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 particularly after the Affordable <laughs> Care Act, there's this theory that John Roberts might be uh, a potential swing vote on the marriage cases, um, in part because of, and, and this is sort of psychological speculation, I think, a little bit of mind reading, there was, there was a lot of thought that Roberts uh, ruled the way he did on the health care law in part because he was concerned for the, the, you know, the, the court's legacy and the, leg- the legitimacy of the court and things like that, and that you know, it, he doesn't want to be the guy who was sitting on the court and said, you know, and, and like helped prolong 
this sort of unjust law that the country is going to overturn in a few years anyway, even if they don't touch it. Um, and he's and because he remember, he's right. and, he might, and he might want to um, and he might want to push it in the direction of a states' rights decision, right. right? As opposed to any other claims but is being that, is made that, foremost. That's essentially is that what you're yes. thinking. Well, I, I've mostly heard Roberts. Uh, mm -hmm. This is outsider, you know. The, Kennedy, I think almost everybody is sure of because he wrote the Rumor and Lawrence decisions, and because it's such a libertarian sort of thing mm -hmm. um, that it's hard to imagine him ruling against us. But um, yes, the speculation I've heard about possibly six to three is Roberts um, wanting such an important decision to be uh, not a bare majority, but a significant majority. And uh, given that it will probably be a majority on that side and uh, legitimacy of the court sort of thing. And also, I've also heard speculation, although this is, this is very much minority speculation, that Clarence Thomas might do it purely out of his state's rights beliefs, <laughs> right? Not, that is, I mean, that's, I know, you laugh. No, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I laughed too when this particular person made this argument to me, but he made it very cogently that it, it you know, that Thomas could say, look, it's a horrible law, but the state has a right to pass a horrible law and the mm -hmm. federal government can't, um, can't deny it. That's not, it's not their power. So, My opinion of Clarence Thomas, if he adopted that rationale for like mm -hmm. breaking down Doma, would just skyrocket. I mean, I, think, <laughs> I don't hate him like other people do. Like, I think yeah. he's a smart guy. I yeah, dislike his jurisprudence, yeah. but I would, I, my head would explode. I think, yeah, if, yeah, if a lot of heads Clarence would explode. Thomas True. <laughs> I don't like think Doma anyone is unconstitutional. Yeah, um, but just Doma Section Three. Remember, I mean, Doma right. Section Doma One and Doma Section Two. We're still going to say. Um, that each state can uh, decide for itself what other marriages it would recognize. Now, the thing about the DOMA cases is if DOMA were down, someone could come to Massachusetts, some same-sex couple from Alabama could come to Massachusetts, maybe Alabama is a wrong example, say Kansas, they could go to Iowa and get married there, and they would go home and they would be married federally, mm -hmm. but not within their state. So they would have the inverse problem that I have today. Mm -hmm. um, and what that would do is dramatically increase the pressure on the state to change its law because you have all these businesses then that, are, that suddenly have to treat some of its employees in two separate ways. It, it's very complicated to have to track. And not to mention you're, you're sort of losing all this business and talent and, you, you know, you, you, people, if, you're, if you have, I mean, if other states are altering their laws in order to be more right. friendly to same-sex couples, they're getting all that sort of, they're getting those couples' money, they're getting their, you know, human capital, yes. and your state is hurting as a result for something yes. that, you know, doesn't really help you at all in any way. And and that's uh, those were the that's the reasoning that um, Jeff Bezos and um, the, all the major capitalists in the state of Washington presumably used to argue that, um, to argue in favor of uh, passing the marriage equality law or upholding the marriage equality law. Uh, you, you, I think you asked me, but if you didn't, I'm going to put it in your mouth. I think you asked me whether the, um, those four ballot wins might have any effect on the Supreme Court, and everybody assumes that it does. Yeah, well, so I, I was going to say, so one of the, um, you know, it, it, uh, over the past... You know, so in 2008, when Barack Obama was first elected president, he had a referendum in California, which everybody considers the most liberal state ever, um, even though uh, it's not quite accurate. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, Barack Obama gets elected first black president. Oh, and California basically makes it illegal for same sex couples to get married. And this is, you know, this is obviously like, mm, sort of, mm. uh, like Adam, Adam, that's not what they did. I, I'm sorry. I have to just check your law here. Oh, they didn't make it illegal for same sex couples to get married. No one would be arrested if they tried to get right. married. Right. It's not like loving where right. it was actually illegal for them to be married. No, mm. it just uh, withdrew uh, the ability to have their their partnership recognized in law right. as a marriage. Right. OK, thank you. Um, but, I'm a nut but, about that. So this this happened, and and but only four years later, you mm -hmm. sort of have the reverse, and 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 this is this is a very important argument for the anti same sex marriage uh, rights movement when they mm -hmm. said, you know, it, it, 
this 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 thing that everybody keeps talking about same sex marriage everybody keeps talking about it, it being inevitable but you know whenever it gets put to the to the voters they they, they side with us it's common um, sense and sen you right. know sensible people yeah unelected and judges and later, rogue legislators but not people yeah right right and then four years later there's this wave uh, where like the exact opposite has happened. It's, I mean, just four years later, you have all these these states, um, Maine, Washington. You, you have all these states, Maryland. You have all these states saying, okay, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, by popular yeah, vote, yeah, but but right. right, voters at the ballot boxes going and 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 legitimizing uh, same sex marriage by a popular vote. Yep. Um, and I guess uh, you know, I'm wondering wh whether you think that this, you know, uh, I, I I I can see how the sort of don't impose mar same sex marriage on us, quote unquote, by judicial fiat mm -hmm. argument might have been more persuasive, you know, to to the, the the swing justices or swing justice on the court before all of this, before this sort of uh, this, this wave, wave that yeah. that really showed that public opinion is changing in like a a measurable measurable way. Yes, yes, the the uh, they're they're not above public opinion, so. The, the movement is on uh, to say the tide of history is moving in a particular direction beyond the right side of history. And that just, that shores that up. Like this is where it's going. All four this year who had, all four states that had a chance to vote on uh, marriage equality voted it will. They either voted in favor of marriage equality or they voted against a constitutional ban on allowing their legislature. Right, that, was, that was Minnesota. That was Minnesota. Yep. Uh, that said they, they tried to ban, they would try to issue a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage, and the voters voted it down, which I think people were pretty surprised about. Yep, very surprised. So uh, one expects, or uh, what is expected is that the legislature will then pass a marriage equality law. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what the pressure is on now. But now, I mean, like, but there is, a, but as you're saying, there is this sort of, you know, uh, uh, this consideration of where, uh, like, you know, everybody says the court's insulated from politics, but is the, mm -hmm. there is this sort of consideration of where the country is Absolutely. Uh, when they're thinking about these legal decisions. And, 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 you know, I think some people think that's ridiculous. And I, I think I, I think it sort of depends. But I, I mean, there is there's this idea that, you know, the, the, the argument that the country wasn't there yet is now it might might hold sway, but is now a lot less strong because of what happened. Uh, well, also, in November yeah, this year. they now have nine states, right? Are they going to say mm -hmm. to nine states the federal government cannot? I mean, if it were just one state, it would be a lot easier to say, you know, that's that's ridiculous. This is the definition of marriage. But there are nine states now that say uh, that will marry same sex couples. Are they going to say that the federal government can refuse to acknowledge all those? marriages and the you know discriminate against those states um laws um i think it was we were going to oh 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 you know what i wanted to add to this is the uh loving v virginia right, right. there had been um interracial marriage cases brought before and the supreme mm -hmm. court kept turning them down until the country had gotten to a certain point with um the african-american civil rights movement anyway mm -hmm. and they the public opinion had changed enough. And finally in 67, is it 67? Which is pretty late when you, I mean, the really Voting late. Rights Act had already yep. passed, the Voting right. Rights Act had already passed. Right, right. So that was, that, that's when they finally took loving and mm -hmm. swatted down the few remaining states, uh, uh, 10 maybe, that um, maybe, maybe as many as 12, but, uh, you know, it's a very small number and um, Southern states, so they were they were a little bit easier to consider, you know, the outlying states, and that swatted down those um, anti miscegenation laws. So uh, there's there's one state in particular I want to talk to you about, and it's one yeah. I'm particularly excited about um, in terms of the we didn't finish up referendum. Prop Eight, you know, but but go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, we didn't finish up Prop Eight. Why we don't want them to take Prop Eight or oh oh yeah, the, wh why don't we go ahead with that? Um, uh, okay. I forgot about that. All right, sorry. Go ahead, EJ. Uh, so. Right now, the way the Prop 8 lawsuit started, Perry, the Perry lawsuit started, was very broad. It was a, a freedom to marry lawsuit under the Constitution. You know, every that, that case 
no one on the LGBT side really wanted to get to the Supreme Court because nobody thinks they're ready for that yet, right? We need more evidence. We need, we need a, um, essentially a plurality of states, a majority of states, before that kind of case goes to the Supreme Court. Um, but the, over the course of the lawsuit, it has been progressively narrowed, and the way the Ninth Circuit opinion was written, it applies only to the state of California. It doesn't even apply to the other states within um, the Ninth Circuit. Uh, the, there's one conceivable state. Uh, I can't and, remember and which one. And people who are apprehensive liked that ruling for that reason, right? Yes. Yes. It was, it was, it, it, that was one of those make my day kind of uh, decisions. Yes, everybody loved the Ninth Circuit decision for that reason. So if, you, if they let it stand, it merely says that the California voters were not allowed to repeal a marriage law that was already in place um, uh, and that the California Supreme Court had said was against the, it would be against the Constitution to not allow the California Constitution to not allow same-sex couples to marry. So it'll only apply in California. And the idea that uh, voters can repeal it and it can keep, it, 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 only bad can come of the Supreme Court mess around with it. Mm -hmm. we, we want it to stay just like that. Unless they, of course, issued the, the, the sort of... Uh, broad the, freedom to marry ruling? Broad freedom to marry ruling, yeah. which I guess people are no. worried, I mean, people are worried, I guess, the opposite of something. I mean, what's the... Oh, that would be a horror. No, that, that, uh, Opinions differ on this, so I'm not going to use the royal we, but in, <laughs> okay. in my opinion, and I, I would say I'm not alone in this opinion, it, I think that could kick off a movement for um, a defense of marriage um, constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to, to like suddenly spring same-sex marriage on Alabama, and yeah, it, it, the country is barely, barely approving right now. And the approval is um, concentrated profoundly in the blue states. Mm -hmm. So it's not distributed evenly around the country yet. The, the goal is to win forever. Not, not just law, right, to win forever, and to win not just law, but to win real acceptance, right? Real mm -hmm. people have to live under these laws. So if marrying in uh, a same-sex couple marrying in, in Georgia or um, Idaho would mean they could be shot. That 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 puts it in the um, that, it puts it in the rogue category. There's going to be a perpetual fight about it. We don't want that by Supreme Court ruling. We want another ten years where we can really win over the country um, more person by person, and then the Supreme Court can clean up the laggers. So is the row like is the row theory that the sort of incredible backlash. It's, is that something that gets discussed a lot as sort of a, a big fear in terms of like how this could pan out if the courts deal with it, quote unquote? I don't think people usually say Roe. I mean, it, it, that's a familiar example to use. I, I, I even hesitated it as it came out of my mouth because there's so much argument over whether Roe really had the backlash that it, you know, mm -hmm. other forces or who knows what. But the, the point being that it would be best to to really win people over first to get the law. But we're only talking about a few more years here, like five to 10 more years. And that is, must loom very large if you're living in North Carolina. And it's easy for me to be blithe about it because I'm here in Massachusetts, but mm -hmm. that's, that's really the way to hold change, change minds, change hearts, and uh, then change laws. And, and to some degree, changing laws changes minds and hearts, but Let's not have it imposed by the Supreme Court just yet. Well, Texas will definitely secede, <laughs> which might be good. Might be good, but I don't, I don't want know. Texas to go. I kind of like Texas. <laughs> okay, and then I'd have to I'd have to go through a border a border checkpoint just to visit my relatives. Um, okay, so I'm I'm pro. I'm I'm, I'm very anti. I guess like there's this, there's this petition on the White House website that yep. has like a lot of signatures now. It's really I don't know the, the whole Texas secession thing is, is I think it's the conservative version of like liberals saying they're going to move to Canada. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when Republicans yeah. win, but I, I did want New England to be able to secede and join Canada at one point. But. <laughs> Well, it, speaking of speaking of like winning people over in public opinion, I, I, I was saying earlier that I thought the most encouraging of the referendum results uh, from from 2012, I, I thought was the state of Maryland. Um, and I say this because even though Maryland's a blue state, 
uh, it was sort of Maryland has a large African American population, and there was I think a, a sort of statistically uh, it, it didn't actually bear out, but it was sort of a, a statistical theory that uh, was based on this one CNN exit poll in two thousand eight that it was black voters who tipped the balance against same sex marriage, and this right. uh, you know uh, this started this whole conversation about. Uh, 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 you know, whether or not black voters were this, uh, the big obstacle in the Democratic coalition to same-sex marriage. And, of course, uh, you know, NAM, the, the National Organization for Marriage, the, the big anti-same-sex uh, marriage rights organization, um, you know, had this whole theory that black voters and, and, and Hispanic voters were going to be the key, like flipping those voters on social conservative issues were, were, were going to be the key to, 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 to stopping uh, you know, uh, marriage equality. Um, but in Maryland, and, and, and that this strategy has, you know, I, I don't know if it's worked, but they they see they saw it as working in states like North Carolina and Florida and like other, other states that have, mm -hmm. have, have, uh, have uh, done same-sex marriage referendums. And, but in Maryland, this time, it really didn't work. No. Uh, you had, I think, partially because of the president's uh, you know, coming out in favor of same-sex which, marriage which, rights. Which flipped African-American opinion by 20 points overnight. Yeah, it was huge. Overnight, yeah. Um, and, and I think this was because, the, and, and this always bothered me, I felt like there was uh, uh, there was this perception of, like, like, Nam was basing their perception that, that, that they could flip these voters easily on the idea that black voters oppose same-sex same -sex marriage the same way they did, which is to say that they would devote their entire lives to preventing gay people from getting married when in fact it's just sort of a skin deep people grow up in like a religious conservative uh, yeah, social background and like it's but it's not a priority they're not going to decide whether or not to vote for they're not going to flip based on same-sex marriage I mean you look at all the major uh, black politicians in the United States almost all of them are pro same sex marriage right as is and, the NAACP and right, right. and in Mar Shotgun, yeah. I mean like it, it's just not an issue it's just not you know it, it, in in a country where you know there are uh, it, 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 you know you have a drug war and you have poverty and you have uh, you know african american wealth being yes. wiped out by the great recession same sex marriage is just not it's not the top priority and and, and yet uh, african americans in maryland did vote in favor that was what right. the polls shows. There, there was, um, I think, the, 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 there was, there was still, a, yes, the, and, and well, the, 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 I, I think there still like needs to be more poll analysis done, but it mm -hmm. looks like to be about fifty fifty, which is like way higher than I think, way closer than it's ever been before. It's it, like in, in the past in, in states when they've had referendums, the black vote has, has trended more uh, towards uh, uh, banning same sex marriage, mm -hmm. and I just think that this. You know, it's one thing, you know, like states like Iowa or Washington, I think that's one thing. But, you know, the Maryland result, I thought, was encouraging because it showed the that this sort of strategy, whether or not it's effective, is actually, you know, it, it has a real expiration date on it. Yes. And I think you told me that a lot of people, you know, a, a, a lot, at the time, a lot of people were really worried about Maryland because they were worried, you know, they, they were worried in particular that the um, that 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 the, the sort of the thing that happened in, in some other states where people were saying they were going to vote uh, for marriage equality, oh, right. but the, the flip in the voting booth was going to happen again. Well, that's uh, no, that's not ex hmm. the, okay. Or like say that, they were undecided. That, yes, what what had happened before, and what I was thrilled to see was no longer true. Overwhelmed to see was no longer true. Is that until this election? Every undecided vote would vote against us, right? That was the history. All undecideds, and primarily because uh, if you haven't thought it through, you go for what's most familiar, right? Um, and most people in this country have not had a reason to think about same-sex marriage in any depth, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I, I don't care. I have, you know, I'm... I'm tracking the Red Sox and I have to get my kid to soccer, right? I have other things to do than worry about that. And, but what, what changed was, um, uh, several things changed. One of them was the strategy that the marriage equality forces used in their ads and in their approach. Um, that also what they, how they did their polling. Um, but 
yeah, there were some of the undecideds broke for us, and everybody, nobody changed their mind in the in the voting booth. They actually voted for us. It was just stunning to me, mm -hmm. just stunning. It's really. Thrilling. I'm just, I'm just particularly excited because I think this sort of like let's put a black preacher up here and have him say that same sex marriage is not a civil right, and I didn't march. You know, with Martin Luther right. King to blah 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 blah. I really, right. I mean, like to really let queers get married. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially because if you look around, m most of Mark, I mean, like m most of the surviving uh, members of King's entourage are absolutely pro same sex marriage rights. Right. Um, but but yeah, I mean, but I, I just I, I'm excited at the idea that a uh, black voters uh, are not going to be the sort of scapegoat uh, for this yeah. stuff anymore and. Uh, and this, you know, this sort of strategy of trying to sort of use same-sex marriage as a racial wedge issue is, mm -hmm. is I think, uh, becoming of obviously of less and less utility. Right, obviously ridiculous. And and um, the marriage equality side did uh, have many black preachers, some prominent mm -hmm. ones in Maryland, uh, say this is a civil issue. And I wouldn't want the government telling me, you know, who I could and couldn't, you know, they, they had they had great messaging saying this law will not say what I have to bless. And why shouldn't they be free to marry? Yes, let's right. let's be. And it was very, I mean, that's 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 also very true. They were very they had a very excellent strategy, which was. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I voted in Maryland uh, this year, so I, I voted for the referendum, and and it was just very, it, it was very, it was very clear, you know, and they were very clear to say this isn't going to affect, you know, your, your church Religious. is not going to be yeah. forced to perform same-sex marriages. It was just, it was, it was very well done. Yep. So speaking of speaking of marriage, uh, there's so marriage is uh, the, the internet's are a buzz about marriage in, in two ways. Uh, one is the, uh, the is that the British royal family, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, uh, prince, uh, prince pregnant. His wife, Kate Middleton, is pregnant. Um, <laughs> I know you can hardly stand it, right? You're so I, excited. I, There's going to be a royal yeah, baby. I, I'm, I confess, I'm totally, I, I totally don't get the whole royal I family thing. I find it, it just, it, it sort of blows my mind. It's like TMZ, but like you're actually going across the Atlantic Ocean to find more celebrities to coo over. Um, but you wrote what I thought was a really brilliant column uh, tying together the, the sort of uh, uh, Prince William, Kate Middleton uh, pregnancy news with something that conservative columnist Roth got that was uh, expressing concern over, which was this idea that that people are more comfortable and are therefore becoming more selfish and not having as many children as they should. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you could just talk about bad that. People, I mean, bad people, bad <laughs> right. It's, it's moral, more like bad Americans. Yes. Children. Oh yeah. Um, well, essentially, it's Princess Kate's job to have a baby. That's her job. That's what she was hired to do. That's what she's getting paid the big money for. She will have no. Um, she has no worries about her health care. She has outstanding prenatal care. She's going to have outstanding postnatal care. She's going to have. Uh, as many nannies and governesses and I don't know what all they've got personal shoppers for this baby as she could possibly want. Um, and for most people, having a baby interferes with doing their job. Right? Mm -hmm. For her, it's doing her job. For me, it's what makes it hard for me to do my job. And it, not having babies, I haven't done that, but being a parent. Mm -hmm. and, and if... If we want to encourage working families to think about having more, if they so choose, you know, there's no, I don't think it should be mandatory for everybody to have a child, but there are certainly plenty of working families who are too exhausted to have as many children as they want, too exhausted, too poor, and cannot imagine how they're going to make it work. The way work and 
school schedules are in direct conflict with mm -hmm. children getting home in time to work in the fields and their parents are still at work um, with the all summer off to, to help them uh, work in the fields. Mm -hmm. While uh, every single working family in this country has to fix that problem by themselves. And I have to tell you, it is incredibly exhausting to fix mm -hmm. that problem, uh, to find the appropriate child care or camp or person to take care of someone if you have to stay at work later. It, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible to do it. And every American has to do it on their own. Even though children in this country, 80% of them are growing up in families where all adults are in the workforce. So either they have two or, you know, three working parents if they're um, in step families and move back and forth between families, or they have, um, a single mother who has to work if they're going to keep a roof over their head. And what, how, how did you say Russ, his last name? Dathat? Dathat, I, I didn't know how to say it. Um, he, he's suggesting that it's, he, he noted in his column that the latest birth rate drop happened at the beginning of the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, suggests that all these incredibly irresponsible people decided not to have children they couldn't afford to raise. <laughs> I mean, how how morally decadent is that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually not more. I mean, it's exactly. It's, it's sort of yes, the I'm being snarky. Of indulgence, really. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 being quite snarky, but so <laughs> <laughs> I, I have tendencies that way. Well, uh, so, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, there are plenty of policies that would not put pressure on people to marry and have children or just to have children. I, you don't have to get married to have children. Um, but would take some of the pressure off working families and make it less of an incredible burden. Right now we completely privatize um, the costs and responsibilities for what is arguably a social good, a future generation, economic competitiveness, the person who's going to be paying everybody's everybody else's social security, but we, we, we make that entirely private. Um, and I think some of those costs need to be more socialized. Um, educational policy, right now you have to move to a district that has a good school system because this district has a good school system, those houses cost more. So you're paying a tax on, if you wanna raise a child in a good school district, you're paying a tax right there. Um, you can stay in poor school system areas and send them to private school, but parents pay more in so many ways to raise children. Well, that's right. So I think, so what, what I'd say in, 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 in Death Ed's defense, I think he has sort of a legitimate point, uh, and I think uh, in, in this sense, not so much on, on the sort of moral scolding side, but in the sense that, and, and I think you said something about it, it, it is important, that, like, it, you have a problem if you have too few young people supporting too many old people in terms of, like, you know, social spending, and, and this is this is something that True. Michelle Goldberg talked about uh, in her excellent book, *The Means of Reproduction*, which is sort of a you know a kind of a short but really excellent history of the sort of battle over reproductive rights in America. And you know, she talks about this sort of uh, birth rate panic in Europe. And what Europe did was they sort of, they started doing all these policies that actually made it harder for women to work so that more <laughs> women would, um, you know, not, not all of Europe, but parts of Eastern Europe, uh, but she singles out Poland in particular, actually sort of made it harder for women to work uh, it, to sort of force them to reassert their, you know, quote unquote, traditional role uh, in that household. <laughs> um, and the result did not, was, was not, I mean, like, birth rates didn't increase. It was actually like women didn't want to have children because they were financially less able to do so. So mm -hmm. it actually had the opposite, this like, uh, you know, this attempt to, this social conservative attempt to turn back the clock mm -hmm. on, on, on decades, uh, even centuries of, cult, uh, of like cultural evolution produced the exact opposite result of the one that was intended. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you, you have Where, like, whereas Sweden, right? It's, isn't it Sweden and Norway that has right. a very liberal and not quite mandatory, but pretty strongly pushed um, parental leave policies that include um, both parents. Um, it can't all be taken by uh, by the birth per birth parent. Um, 
I'm trying to leave room, as you can see, for a, a non-father partner. Right. Um, and and as a result, they they did get a little increase. First, they got an increase in number of people who were t using those policies, and then they got a little increase in their birth rate. Right. I mean, so, 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 so Mich Michelle's argument, and I think it's, it, you know, no surprise here, but I think it's a good one, is, is, is I think what you were saying, which is that you sort of, if you're worried about this kind of uh, the, the birth rate panic, what you really want to do is make it easier for people to have children without sort of ruining their own careers, because we're never going back to, we're, we're just never going back to mom, mom sits at home all day, cleans the house and, uh, you know, makes dinner. Uh, well, you know, not on today's no, salaries, but right. I, I also well, want to say not just to that, I mean, careers. Of, like, everybody's not going back to that. I mean, obviously right. some people make that choice, but... Mm, I, or I don't, I'm not sure they make the choice so much as often they are pushed into it. That, but that, we'll we'll leave that aside. Whether or not it it's depends. A I mean, it depends on the person. I think. But yes, it does depend on the person. But I, I want to say it's easy to say careers. Mm -hmm. uh, often we're just talking about jobs. We're not talking right. about careers, right? So if you're 50 percent of American workers don't have paid sick time. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are at the low end of the scale, but they're, you know, making our food and shopping our whatever and cleaning public restrooms and uh, selling things in Walmart. And if they lose their jobs, to, if they decide they have to stay home with the child because the child is sick and they don't have a sick day, even for themselves, much less for a family member, they can lose their job. And that because, you know, so there are plenty of families that are one sick child away from homelessness. Mm -hmm. So there, there are a lot of policies that don't, uh, that aren't aimed just at the aspiring lawyers and um, professionals uh, who also need to be supported. I, I, I don't want to say that, but I just want to say it's much broader than people who want to have careers. Well, right. Well, when you have, I mean, I suppose it's, I mean, it certainly, it certainly is a difference, right? I mean, if you're, if you're a, a, you know, if you've got, if it's really you're a lawyer, you're a doctor. I mean, I think there's, there's like places put more effort into retaining you as, as human Correct. because of your human capital than like, you know, if you get pregnant and you're working a, a, a job as a waiter as a restaurant at a restaurant and you're also doing retail, um, you know, I mean, like those places are not going to be like, yeah, sure, you know, take a few months off. No. No, they're not, they don't say take a few months off. They don't say stay home if you're sick. They say we don't pay you if you're sick. We, we don't want you to come in, but uh, you're not going to get paid. And and they give um, um, absurdly unpredictable schedules as well. So the lower you are on the um, economic scale, the less likely you are to be able to schedule anything about your life, which means you have a harder time getting childcare because you don't know when you're going to work. It's not like you can line up the nice lady down the street. She's you know, she also has a job or whatever. The, so you can't afford reasonable child care and you can't, um, you can't schedule it. It's, it, there are so many things that would make this country far more uh, family friendly uh, to all the people who have to work for a living, which is almost everybody. I mean, Anne Romney could stay home and have five children, but uh, they're not that, there are not that many people in Anne Romney and Princess Kate's position. <laughs> well, on that note, EJ, uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, for doing blogging heads with me. Thank um, you. And and you're of course uh, welcome to come back anytime on Itemize. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Right, take care. Have fun.